Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, I want to show you another new Utah feature in Service Operations Workspace with change management. But to start, I'm going to take you back to Tokyo so you can see why this is such a big deal, why this is such a big improvement. So I'm in Service Operations Workspace. I'm going to navigate over to our change requests. So change uh, here, we'll just do all open changes. And I'm gonna click the new button. And if you had never seen a change in service operations workspace, well, now's your chance to see it. We get a nice little pop-up of the different types of change models that we might wanna start with. I'm gonna go normal because we're gonna keep this video normal, hopefully. And you'll see in Tokyo, what was the normal change request process. And it's basically the details form and you fill it out. It was enough, but it wasn't a great experience. As you can see there, I've got all the different sections, planning, scheduling, all that stuff that I wanna to go to. Now I've got in my PDI, the new version set up, so we're gonna do the same thing. Now I'm in Utah, and I've only done the first part of this, the first page that you're gonna see here. I've left the rest for my actual reaction, and we're gonna walk through creating a normal change in Utah in the service operations workspace. So there's my mode one normal change for ITIL, I'm gonna click next, and you're gonna notice right out of the gate, it already looks different. So the big theme here is gonna be an overview tab that's new. So you still got that details tab that's showing up there next to overview, and that's gonna be like what you saw in Tokyo. But what we're seeing here in <clears throat> Utah is this new kind of life cycle or workflow we can see where it's new under assessment, authorized, scheduled, implemented, reviewed, closed, or canceled. And we're gonna be able to see all that as we move through. So let's do this together. Again, I've seen this first page already. The rest of it is all gonna be new to me. So let's just do a short description, demo for YouTube. And we'll give it a long description. Um, I like blogging all of my changes for production. And the justification is gonna be because change management is good for the world. All right, so I'm gonna hit save. I've noticed I've got this new floppy disk icon right here, so I'm not gonna to have to use this save button up here. So let's try that out. We'll hit the save button and see what happens next. Okay, so uh, more tabs, that's interesting. So now I've got two tabs, additional tabs for change tasks and related records. And I've got some new fields down here uh, for scope and impact, schedule, risk evaluation, and change tasks. So let's walk through each one of these. We'll add some scope here. Um, okay, these look familiar. We'll add a configuration item. We'll pick a Windows server there. Uh, we'll add a service offering. I don't think I have any service offerings in my PDI. I don't think I've built any out, so I'm not gonna be able to add a service offering. Let's see if I have any services. I do have services. We'll choose campaign management and category. Okay, so I got hardware, software, service. We'll just go with uh, software. And uh, we'll hit the save icon again and see what happens. Okay, so I've got these little widgets now. Impacted services is showing one. Um, are these clickable? No, yes, they are clickable. Okay, so if I click them, I got a nice little summary down below showing the impacted services. And there's my add button. So if I need to add um, additional services, or I'm guessing if I check the box here for campaign management, I can then remove the one that I added just a second ago. Okay, so this is looking pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and collapse that section and get to the schedule. So we'll set schedule and that is opening a new tab. I was, oh wow. Okay, this is new. Um, okay, so I'm seeing my blackout windows, my maintenance windows, related changes that might be in the system. Oh, I wish I had some other changes now. Um, and I'm viewing a week. So up here, the upper, upper right, I'm in the America Los Angeles time zone, despite the fact that I've put Eastern time zone as my preferences so many times. But uh, okay, so I can look at the day or the week, and then I guess, do I just pick a time? How do I use this? Uh, see, this is what happens when you're trying this out for the first time. Okay, so I picked a day. There's no event scheduled for that day. And then how do I pick a time? I don't know how to pick a time. Interesting, I can't click anything there. Oh, there it is. Okay, just above my head. Let's get my head out of the way. So you may have missed it. There was uh, right here, uh, let's see, we'll switch to my pen and I'll draw an arrow. Right here <clears throat> on the right hand side was this little calendar icon with a check mark. And uh, when I hit that, 
it swung open a window for the actual schedule. So I guess in the middle here is a visual of other things plus my change. And then let's go ahead and pick a schedule. We're gonna do this, today is Saturday. Uh, so we'll do this Saturday at 8 p.m. And we're gonna go until, let's say, 11 p.m. Uh, 2300 and uh, I'm not seeing anything happen on the screen <clears throat> and this is through well for, oh because my it's probably the schedule it it's probably behind that window there okay there it is now it's showing all right so I've got a nice green box for my skate change demo for YouTube plan start and end date 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. and it looks like I have the global infrastructure uh, maintenance window for the Windows server. Okay, so I got something there showing up. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Let's head back to details. Um, I've got my schedule now. Let's just, okay, so it's showing there. Conflicts detected. Um, and I can't do anything else other than open the scheduler. Okay. Conflicts detected because I'm not in my maintenance window, it looks like. Okay, interesting. Uh, we'll close that. And let's go ahead and calculate some risk. I've never played with this before. And where'd it go? Let's give it a schedule. It disappeared. I don't think I've set up risk, change risk. So I'm surprised that it even showed up. Um, but now it's gone. I don't know where it went. Let's do a save and see if it reappears. Um, nope, that guy is gone. It is not coming back. We can add a task. So we'll add a task here for all viewers to, uh, this will be a review task. Uh, so this is interesting, a planning task, implementation, testing, review. We'll do a review task. And uh, let's have fun with this. I'm going to assign this to all of you, this review task. Let me get my head out of the way. And this is going to be all viewers. Leave a comment down below. Let's see, down below. And I sh the comment should be something like, uh, comment should be about how crazy that was when Justin saw all of that appear on screen without any warning, okay? So we're gonna play a trick on people here. If you leave a comment down below, uh, maybe they'll see it. They're gonna wonder what you're talking about, so they have to watch the video in order to see what you're talking about. Not that I'm trying to get views or, or anything like that, but I've got my change task number, configuration item. Uh, okay, so I've got my assignment. Let's go ahead and give this to a group. Um, let's not give it to the refrigerator support. That would just not be nice to give them an IT change. Let's give it to my app engine admins and we'll save it. I won't put a schedule on it. We'll save it. And there we go. I've created a new change task for all of you viewers to leave a comment down below um, about that crazy thing that happened halfway through the video. Okay, so there's my change task. Let's scroll on down. Okay, look, I got a card view of my change task now showing up. I can switch to a list view. This is pretty cool. It's just, um, just a little nicer experience for a change. Now let's take a peek at what the details look like. Okay, that looks just like it did in Tokyo. I've got all that stuff there, so I can go complete all that. Now I'm sure the change task is gonna show up for the one I created for all the viewers to so leave a comment down below. And then related records, I guess I could relate. Oh, wow, this is cool. Okay, affected CIs, services, outages, approvers, applied change policies, incidents fixed by the change, problems, incidents caused by the change and task SLAs. So pretty neat there. I'm actually pretty impressed with this new experience. Um, I've got a request approval button there at the top. Uh, request approval assigned to me. So some neat stuff there. And I saw in this one here, yeah, create change task, compose an email, copy the change, create knowledge, re refresh the impacted services. So I give an A plus for the new change experience in service operations workspace in Utah. Definitely looks a little different. I hope you like the fact that I took you through it live. I hadn't seen, other than that overview page, I hadn't seen any of it before, so you saw my actual reaction. And I really hope you did leave a comment down below so people wonder what the heck happened during the video. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in an improved change experience in service operations workspace in the Utah release early access. And until next time, don't forget, to always be learning.